bucks. <laughs> so, so I'll begin with saying, like, I, you know, poetry is, I don't have much of a background in poetry. Um, I'm an English teacher, so I do teach poetry. Um, okay. So, <laughs> it's not my, I teach out here in high school here. Yeah. Uh, so, because of my lack of, especially in this stock, this uh, genre of poetry, I, I felt woefully uh, inadequate in terms of giving me the feedback you probably were hoping for. Uh, so I do have feedback, but I, you know, my, my strong suit is prose. Uh, I have an unfortunate memoir and fiction. So, and I even told Hart Johnson, I'm like, I really feel bad because I feel like I can't, you know, give him meaningful feedback in a way that I can with the other writers. But with that being said, I do have some feedback. Um, but I, I was very intrigued by your background and, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, I was impressed, I mean, extremely impressed with the quality and the depth of the writing. Thank you. I mean, it's, you know, very, it's stuff that I feel like I was reading in college when I was trying to get through, you know, Beowulf and stuff. Yeah. Well, Beow <laughs> Beowulf's a, a character in my epic poem, too. Yeah. So, yeah, so it makes sense. Um, so I enjoyed your preface. Um, I, I, you know, I also feel like it was so well written that there was, I wasn't going to go out of my, or I wasn't going to come up with feedback that wasn't necessary. Meaning, okay. this, you know, I tried to look for things that, okay, what could have, what could have been done better, but this read very solid. Okay. Um, and obviously your book's published too, right? So it's yeah. pretty much set in stone. Yeah. Uh, which is good because at least you published something that didn't need much, <laughs> much work. Well, I worked yeah. on it for 30 years. Uh, yeah, so, you know, because some of the author, other authors, you know, they, they were definitely half-baked manuscripts that yeah. where I was able to say, okay, here's what you can work on. So, uh, so I'm glad you published it as a public, you know, a lot of times people publish something that's not quite ready. Um, I just wrote here, it would be useless to us to even attempt to come up with anything for this. I just thought it was very, very well written, very, uh, you know, so who, I guess I want to start with, who was, who's your audience that you have in mind? My audience, really, right from the beginning of my conceived of the entire planet. The, the, Earth, the image of Earthrise really dominated my thinking and reflection for so many years, starting from uh, the late 70s and into the 80s. I don't know if you know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell's writing. Oh yeah, I, I teach The Hero's Journey. Okay, yeah. Hero's right. Journey, I read, and he had wrote, he wrote a couple of essays uh, right after the, the Apollo 11 mission on uh, the meaning Earthrise as a new symbol, oh, and uh, publishing various books of his, and I kept thinking about it, reading it, and trying to find a way to write the entire planet. My own experience and life experience is very international and uh, global. My education at the University of Michigan, and I lived in Japan for a few years. Hey, your bio is very good. I traveled all over China and so on. So where did you grow up? Are you from? I, I grew up in Rochester, Michigan. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm from Dearborn originally. But so. very, very early, I, in, as a high school student, I had a world religions class that was very important to me. And it was the first time I read the scriptures from, from uh, all different religions. Yeah, there's definitely a, India, a, a biblical. India, biblical. Yeah. Uh, even as a student at the University of Michigan, I had classwork in biblical studies, wow. Asian literature. You definitely see that in your writing. At times I felt like I was reading passages from. <laughs> I, I had the college class in uh, Japanese literature. Wow. So on. So all that just continues to be part of my life. So I'm going to find a way to bring together all the world visions in, in a way that becomes unified together. Also, my family background, I grew up in a family that uh, there was uh, several Christian denominations and secular and uh, one of my earliest childhood memories is all, uh, all my relatives arguing, fighting, it's a, about whatever, and my mother exclaiming, enough, we're here to celebrate the holiday, <laughs> together as a family, you know, and, and, you know, as I got older, I kept thinking about that, and it really became one of the things in my life that kept me how to bring together all these contentious, dissident visions so often religion can be, find what's good in it, and affirm right. humanity. Yeah. That's the first chapter you've written, or, or read rather, is basically setting the scene, it's in Midius Ray, the great epic traditional yeah. form, where you begin in the middle of things, already on the moon, and then from there, the narrative goes through each 
civilization back and forth to the moon. Different characters serve as like a Dante, right, right. Dante yeah, so guy. Really, it's incredible to see this being like a fascinating part. It's a journey. Yeah. It's a it's a journey. I'm looking that idea out of all the literature out of Joseph Campbell of the journey of the hero, the hero's journey. And uh, the, the main character, the poet of the moon, is instructed by all the poets on the moon about uh, how to create and write a global universe of vision of life to create peace on Earth. Right. Help, help. Yeah, yeah. Peace so there's a need for that. Um, so, I'm, so have you done big public readings or do you do a kind of reading public I've readings? done about 15 readings yeah. to date. It was published in 2012. And uh, I've done about 15 readings and then I'm trying to get more readings. Books available at Crazy Wisdom. I joke sometimes I took all of Crazy Wisdom's bookstore yeah. and I synthesized it. Yeah, really, that's a good way to look at it. Now, because they do the, the featured author uh, event. I have read yeah. Crazy Wisdom oh, okay, a couple great. years ago at uh, their poetry night. Ed Morin, did you read that? Ed Moore, yep. I know Ed Moore. Yep, I, did I, did I read about 10 minutes worth of uh, the opening. You know what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to introduce to readers the fullness of English literature. World is, right, no, it's a good primer. And why, it's, why it's so important. Sure. And yeah. to give them a little taste of green man, a little taste of man, a little yeah. taste of whoever. And to inspire people not only to read my book, but then go beyond and read some of those great things. Yes, no, absolutely. No, it's kind of a nice little, like, Homer, uh, Virgil. Right? Yeah. It's almost like a a stepping stone into all this world that people might otherwise never touch upon. I'm hoping uh, to revive the literature. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a nice pursuit. Now I'm ready to launch out. Right. One thing that happened to me in 1977, I, I had a class in theater. And in theater, I learned about the Greek rap souls who would recite home and travel around of our ancient Greece. And back in, that was 1977, and I kept thinking, thinking about that, I couldn't forget about it. And I decided I'm going to write an epic poem, and then I'm going to try to not only revive the art of epic poetry, but revive the art of the rap soul, travel oh. around the world reciting it. So it's, that's the stage of my life yeah, that's, that's, in my early 60s that I'm on now. I'm trying to go out there and read some people. That, you know, it's amazing that, that, that people exist on this planet that have that type of pursuit. Because it is really, you know,